welcome to Tech Talk Weekly. I'm Bob from Creation Station. This is our show every week where we give you two to three fun tech stories out there in the world, highlight something that's interesting and fun happening at the library, and send you on your way in about 20 minutes or so. So thank you very much for stopping in today with us. We have our my guest host today, Shantina Johnson from the Pompano Library. How are you doing today, Tina? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Life is really good right now. We had a little bit of equipment problems down at Maine, but I solved, uh, found another place and made it all happen for me. So uh, <laughs> have a nice little background to, to work on this time. What is uh, going on? You look like you're in the uh, in one of the rooms there at Pompano. Yes, I'm upstairs. Excellent. Nice to see that room getting used then, huh? I am going to jump right in for us today, and I'm going to sh- uh, let me share out my browser here for our. Uh, where, 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 where is my Chrome browser to share? Come on, no peoples. Sorry about that. Well, you know what? We can. There we go. There it is. Okay, so. And our first story today, yeah, yeah, I know we're recording. It's okay. There we go. Thank you very much. Our first story today is all about Mars because there's been a couple of really cool things. How much have you been following with all the, the Mars and ingenuity stuff that's been going on, Tina? Uh, not really, to be honest. I haven't really followed it like that. Uh, you, you, you should see we've been plugging it so much here on the show this uh, these last couple of weeks, especially since it landed. Um, we've got the brand new video that just came out of the helicopter that ju- from this morning. And I'm gonna throw that video up onto the big screen. It's just nine little seconds, but you okay. can see where we actually have full video now of the drone. I just like calling this a helicopter. To me, helicopters mean you have somebody inside, you know? That, 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 if you're going to call it a helicopter, I want to go riding it. This is more <laughs> like the drones that we have, right? You're just watching something fly. Yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, it, now, that to be said, it's an extremely cool thing to have this happening like this. Um, and one of the, the secrets that uh, NASA did was they hit a little piece, about a postage stamp size piece, of the Wright Brothers flyer, the original one that flew a Kitty Hawk, is glued to the bottom of that thing so that it flew again out there on Mars. And I just thought that was a really great tribute that they pulled out for that kind of stuff. Do you think that they are going, I feel like in the near future, they are going to try to make Mars a place to live? And it might I, just be for, you know, like the out the space station and people that are already, you know, out there and doing the flying. Mm-hmm. That may be a place to where they can stay in station. Uh, um, and I think maybe the helicopter is a way of transportation. Like you said, you want to see yeah. somebody else fly in it. So that may just be the first beginning of them trying to pull things together. Yeah, and I think and I think that really is. You're right. Um, because that's the other story that came out this morning, and this just came out early. The experiment happened yesterday for they were able to produce oxygen on Mars. They have a little power plant attached to Perseverance, and it sucked in the CO2 from the Mars atmosphere and converted it to oxygen, which is exactly what you're talking about. That's what we need to do. If there's actually going to be people walking around on that planet 100 years from now, or whenever yeah, that is, so. We need to make the oxygen, which is a really great first step that they they actually have pulled us off. So I think it's really cool that they've been able to do this. Um, and like you said, we need we're on the space station already. They've been on the space station oh, maybe as long as you've been alive, right. um, and we're about to get to the moon. That's what the Artemis project is all about: is getting out to the moon. And so we're going to have a moon base here soon because China and and Russia are working together on their own moon base. So I know we're going to start doing that to compete with them. So we've got a a lot of stuff happening out there. 
I mean, it's going to be hope across our fingers. Hopefully, before too long, we'll have that moon. At least a couple of people walking around on the moon as a moon base out there. And SpaceX is the company that's going to do it. Uh, just before dawn tomorrow morning, SpaceX is launching up to the space station again. Um, normally, we don't talk a lot about things that are going to happen on this show. But this is kind of important because it's not only going to be the first time that a crew capsule has been reused to get up into space since the space shuttle, but also the rocket that's launching it is going to be reused also. And isn't SpaceX was the um, the private space flight company? Yeah, like the first yeah. one. Yeah, they're the first one out there launching to the launching to the space station and they're the first ones to build reusable stuff like this they just won the contract from nasa for the artemis project to get us to the moon so yeah it's really interesting out there um to see how far we've pushed this space stuff all of a sudden and it's like it all all of a sudden it started to like really gain momentum where we yes, went years yes. where it was like okay we're going to pay russia for this or we're going to do these things and now all of a sudden in the last 24 months or so it's just like bing 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 everything's happening of course it's not quite like that because as mars missions launched two three years ago to get it there right now it just so happens that all the stuff's ending up now at the same time but it's it's a lot we might be we might be taking flights from earth to mars as, as field trips and stuff later on in the future <laughs> Oh, I definitely. Oh, I would do. I would do a field trip to the moon tomorrow. You, you just let me on that thing, and I'll go tomorrow. I'll go to the moon tomorrow. Mars, maybe not so much, but the moon, a couple of days out, a couple of days back. I've got lots. Yeah, of Yeah, and it's closer. Time. It's much closer too. Yeah, the moon is closer. Yeah. You got enough vacation time for me? I, I, I don't, I don't know. Before. It depends on how long it's going to take you. <laughs> three days. Three days there. Three days back. <laughs> Take two weeks off. Come on back. Where'd you go for vacation? Ah, nothing. We just hung out. Um, but changing away from our space theme for the week, <laughs> um, there was one other story that I thought was really interesting that came out this week on um, would you run away from a T-Rex? Of course. And, <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. Well, you know, you see it in the movies where it's chasing down the Jeep or they're chasing down people and eating them and everything like that. And it turns out they're wrong. So all those things have all been wrong. There's this brand new simulation now that shows exactly how T-Rex used to walk. We're going to see if, it, if it's going to load the video for me. Now, of course, it's not going to the second time I come back. But it will, um, so what they discovered was the weight of the tail and how that tail, at least I've got a picture of it. There we go. Okay. Um, it's the weight of that tail and how it goes back and forth and up and down keeps the weight. And here we go. We can see that video showing now where it, it'll, it only walks at about a three mile per hour pace. Now, it's pretty big and it's got a long stride, but they figured out that walking is down around two to three miles an hour and running is the three to four. Humans on average walk 2.5 miles an hour. Just your casual actual stroll if you're walking around the library. So you could actually out walk a T-Rex. But you know what? If you see one coming, would you actually walk? No, I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm running. I'm gonna book it. About, right, like. But you know what? I was thinking with the steps, though. It's still easier to get closer, even if it might be walking so slow. It's it's still oh, gonna be yeah. close to you in no time. And these things are big. So, yeah, I might need to take like, you know, 10 or 15 steps to their two steps. So, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. We're running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an interesting thing to, to contemplate there. And it's nice that they've been able to figure all this out from a couple of different fossils that they have. They have the full skeletons that they've been able to work on and, and see where, how the ligaments attach and everything. 
and then fossilized footprints that they have found elsewhere in the world to know exactly how long a stride is for them and stuff. So it's been really interesting. And then you have to look at them when they get ready to um, attack for prey. Yeah. I know they're going to move a little yeah. bit faster anyways. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's just, and uh, it's, if you look at how mammals do, or even if you look at other reptiles, look at a monitor lizard. You know, they, they just sit there and do nothing. Alligators, they sit there and do nothing. And then all of a sudden, wham, they're there that's on top it. of that. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not too happy about the idea of meeting a T-Rex in the wild, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty cool story. And hopefully they don't put any on Mars. But no. Um... Yeah, no, no, no. Let's just <laughs> one planet free from dinosaurs. We have yeah. all the robots on Mars. Let's keep Mars for the robots. And let's, you know, if we're going to redo a Jurassic Park thing on Earth, leave them on Earth. Let's not put them out there. Our third and final story for the day is uh, all about travel. This came in from one of our listeners. Um, and they uh, found this interesting article out there about what you're going to need when you go out to travel. And we're all going to need our vaccine cards, most likely right. to go out there and travel and do that kind of stuff. And then this article out on the New York Times, and by the way, just in case as you're listening, all of these things, we always put all the links in our show notes uh, when we put these um, up on the web, uh, on our, the library's Facebook page. So some of these things that you're going to want to pay attention to, and this is from the New York Times, is looking at what kind of new tech or what kind of things you want to remember as you're going to start traveling now. And one of them is going to be not necessarily your physical paper passport, but you may need to have an app. And it's kind of up in the air right now about which app are you going to be using for that environment as you're going to be trying to, ch to travel. What are you going to have to show to do? Some places don't, some places do. There's still some a lot of quarantines in place and all those sorts of things to do. So if you're going to be traveling, one, make sure you visit the U.S. Embassy site. You know, go to the State Department and check out the site there to see exactly what you need to have and wh where you need to go. And then figuring out where you're going to be going on. Um, what where you're going to be going will tell you which kind of mobile health app you need to use. And there's a couple of them, uh, Common Pass, ICC, Verifly. Um, there's an international air transport one that is popular in Europe, but uh, not so much around the rest of the world. So you need to pay attention to where and what you're gonna be doing that way when you're using these. You have any ideas about where you wanna travel when you get a chance to, Tina? Right now, no. I've never really traveled too much. Oh. So I haven't really thought about where I would want to go yet. What about you? Um, I'm looking forward to trying to get back out. Uh, my wife wants to go back to Italy again. She's been twice. She wants me to go again with her. Um, I want South Africa. Um, okay. It's been like 15 years since we went to South Africa, so I really want to go there. I am not positive, though, that anyone's going to let people from the United States in anywhere very soon. Um, but I did want to talk about a couple of things, no matter where you're traveling. If you're leaving the United States with your, you either want to get uh, a separate phone that you pick up while you're in that country, or you want to make sure your own phone is unlocked. So when you get to that country, you can just pop a new SIM card in to use it. Uh, your card probably is, your phone probably is already that way, but double check with your carrier, whoever you are out there that's doing this. And the other thing to make sure that you do is download any maps you might want to use ahead of time. Because wherever you are, you may not have Wi-Fi, you may not have good connections, and you're going to want to make sure that any maps you need to use are downloaded onto your phone directly. Uh, if you're using Google Maps or Bing, both are the, as the two most popular mapping places, you can download your maps to your phone and keep them there so that you'll be able to use it. Um, other apps that I recommend out to people, and these, mm -hmm. the ones I'm going to show you right now, I've got three of them that I want you to know about. These are websites. These are on iOS. These are on Android. So you can use them on your phone, on your 
browser on anything that you need to. And the first one, guess I'm not going to sneeze. Ah, uh, see, there we go. Just as just as I was about to hit, unpause it again. Okay, so um, flight aware, uh, flightaware.com, and that's where you get the app. Also, is an amazing real time tracker for all air flights all around the, the world. I use this whether I'm flying internationally, whether I'm flying just around the um, United States. You can see right here. Here's their current map of all of the planes that are in the air right now flying around. This was a really interesting to look at at the height of the pandemic when there were no airplanes out there and you could just see one or two of them on, on a map. Now you can see there's a lot more out there. But one of the nice things about this when you have it on your phone or whenever you type in the um, address, the, the tail number of the plane that you're supposed to be flying or that you're trying to pay attention to, and it will zero in on that one for you and show you exactly how slow it is, where it's coming to, everything like that. And it'll even tell you what, where your destinations are and all that kind of stuff. So this is a great app to have if you're doing any kind of airfare, um, air travel or anything like that. If, does that work? Does that work while you're flying? Yes, if you pay for the, if you have the Wi-Fi while you're up there on the plane, you could use that on the plane too, yeah. Okay. I use it usually when I'm sitting at the airport, when my wife's flown away to some place and I'm sitting there waiting for her to come back. Um, I just had to pick up my couple uh, about a month ago, my sister and brother-in-law went up to Alaska. And so I was sitting at the airport here in Fort Lauderdale and I had this up and running, just waiting to see where their plane was. And once it, once it landed, then I knew, okay, great. Now I can text them and find out what baggage carousel they're at and stuff like that. So this is definitely something anyone out there as a piece of travel tech, this is the thing to have. The other one that I think everybody should be using and it's free is called TripIt. This is an app, again, that you can use on iOS, on Android, or use their website. And this doesn't necessarily involve flights. This involves everything you do with travel. So if you're gonna do hotels and rental cars as you're driving because you don't wanna fly right now, all you do is you sign up for TripIt, get a free account, and then forward those confirmation emails to your TripIt account. It's just for once it knows where it's coming from, and it automatically fills out your whole itinerary for you. So you can have your oh, hotel nice. reservation, your, your rental car reservation, if you've got concert tickets, if you've got whatever things you're gonna be doing, you can fill them all out on TripIt and have it sent there and have it all laid out and it's all free. If you send your flight stuff to them and you pay for the app, there's a yearly subscription. Uh, they will actually warn you if your flight's about to be canceled so that you can go call the airline to get your flight changed before it's actually canceled. So you're not stuck in that long line of people trying to redo a flight or you can even do it on the app for some airlines. Uh, I had a Delta flight a couple of years ago that got canceled and TripIt just gave me an alternative flight and said, do you want to book this one for free? And I was like, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. Um, and then one other app that I want everybody to know about and use is Google Translate. Of okay. course, you can go Familiar to translate.google.com. What was that? Familiar with that one. Yeah, um, so you can use Google Translate on your phone, iOS or Android or on the web or anything to do all of your translating for you while you are traveling. Um, this made me look like a genius when we were in Thailand because I could just hold up my phone, scan the sign, and it would spit it right back out to me in English and show me exactly what that sign said in English. And all the locals were amazed about what we were doing. So did you try to make some conversation? Oh, you can. When you were in Thailand, you can. I, I didn't have to um, when we were there. I didn't try it out for that. Um, I've done this using um, in the library, uh, using it for Spanish and Russian. Uh, we've had a few Russian families at main library that I've used it for to, to talk with them. So that worked out. It worked out pretty well. 
um, at least they understood what I was trying to say, and I figured out what they were trying to say by doing the re the conversation part on the phone. So that worked really well for us there. So if you're going to be doing anything out there travel wise, those are the top three apps to use. Make sure your vaccine stuff is ready. Make sure your phone's ready, like we pointed out in that article, and then flight aware, trip it, and Google Translate. You're going to be good to go for traveling and keeping the, the tech ready no matter whether you're doing anything whether you're just taking a laptop or an ipad with you or your smartphone or whatever sounds good tina sounds good i think i'm definitely going to be trying to trip it yeah it's it's trips a really nice thing and you can lay yeah. out all of your stuff and you can share your travel plans with family or friends so they know exactly how to get to it and stuff like that so it's been really nice um i do have one quick um, plug for Tuesday's show, uh, creation station monthly is coming up this next Tuesday. Feel everybody can go in and register for that class. Um, creation station monthly is our 1 where we get 2 creative people to talk about whatever they're being creative in their field. And this week, this month, next week is going to be all about music. Uh, okay. we have uh, a local person who's in a Beatles band. Um, who's local here in South Florida, and we're going to be talking with another artist out in Seattle um, and get their take on how it's been to be a musician during the pandemic and stuff. So it's, that's a fun one to do. And the other interesting library uh, thing to share out today is our on our Facebook feed went out this morning at nine o'clock. Yesterday evening, we did an AI and ethics class. We did a, a little lecture um, talk where we had um, uh, Chloe Cotta, uh, who works at, at, works in the AI field and works in designing. And we had a nice little hour long talk about ethics and AI. So if you get a chance, go find us out there on the Facebook feed and those are out there for you. Let me stop that sharing there and get you up there. So Tina, tell us about what's going on out of Pompano right now. What's, what's happening out there? Well, right now I've worked on building a book holder for the read alongs for the youth service department because nice. they always, they don't stay up straight. Uh, they're always moving around. So this kind of helps them stay up. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm actually, that kind of makes it look more neat and together in that section. And uh, so this is what that it looks so like. using the technology that we've got at the libraries. To, to yes. Pull yeah. Yes. And you guys have been doing all those takeaways too. And you've got all the stuff for summer learning. You got I'm certain you guys have piles of stuff starting to build up there now. Yes. It's going to be fun. And uh, so in, in case anybody uh, local people here, uh, Pompano has a creation station out there. You can come in and do your 3D printing. Um, there's some specific databases you can pull your uh, 3D printing designs from. But you come in, you stop by the Pompano Library, and Tina will help you print out whatever you need. You need to print out a little model coronavirus just for old time's sake. <laughs> now, it's going to disappear. We just want a little remembrance. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, well, come on in and we'll print that out for you. We've had maybe a few people um, maybe last year, but that was when we were not open. I mean, not open, but um, doing any printing and they were asking about it. Yeah, it's going to be happening. Well, thank you so much, Tina, for joining us this week. Uh, let me throw up our ending slide here. And again, everybody, thank you for joining us this week. Any ideas, questions, forward them to us at creationstation at broward.org. If you, if you want to see your favorite library or librarian featured on the show, give us a call. Let us know, and we'll make that happen for you. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you next week. See ya.